Hey, my friends, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do it one bite at a time. So I'm going to show you one of my top five all-time favorite verses. In fact, this was the number one for me for a while. It's Doctrine and Covenants section 82, verse 10, where it says, I, the Lord, am bound when you do what I say, but when you do not what I say, you have no promise. Now, as I was growing up and, and still learning the scriptures, it almost that verse almost became transactional for me. I do this, God does this. And transactional faith is, it's okay to, I think, start that way to look at it. But just, if you go your whole life just going, if I do this, God will bless me. And he has to. He is bound to do it. Therefore, I'm going to force his hand on this. I almost looked at it that way. And I don't know if that's the best way to look at this verse. That I guess you can call me a recovering transactional faith believer. Um, God owes me nothing. Okay, that's something I think that that God does not owe me anything. He just is not like he he has to bless me. He doesn't have to do anything for me. He is God. He needs nothing from me. But I do need his blessings. And so I've looked at this verse now a little bit differently. It used to be, like I said, I do this. God has to do this. I don't look at it that way anymore. I look at it more as the Lord is so kind and he is so good and he is so merciful that when I connect myself to him through covenants, it is my opportunity to be blessed by him and the privilege to be blessed by him. It's like God using this as an excuse to bless me. I remember talking to a student one time and I said, why does God want us to pay tithing? He surely doesn't need our money. And this kid raised his hand and he just said, well, God is looking for reasons to bless us. And when you kind of change that transactional idea, it really does. You look at God a little bit more mercifully. In fact, you, you can't, I don't think, teach verse 10 without teaching verse 15. Verse 15 says, Therefore I give unto you this commandment, that ye bind yourselves by this covenant, and it shall be done according to the laws of the Lord. So rather than binding the Lord, you bind yourselves to him through covenant. In fact, it's interesting, the word bound, bound is an interesting word. In the 1828 dictionary, which was right around that time that Joseph would have had, the word bound means to hold fast with bands, chains, or fetters. And fetter is a foot chain. Uh, and so I guess the question is, how do you then bind yourself to the Lord? Well, I want to give you kind of an obscure scripture reference. This is, when was the last time you've read from the book of Philemon? Yeah, you're like, what is a Philemon? Well, that's a book in the New Testament. It's only one chapter and it's the Apostle Paul speaking. But uh, you look at this, look at the way Paul starts off this verse. It says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. That's an interesting way to introduce yourself. You go all the way down to verse number nine again. He says, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So Paul describes himself this way. In fact, he does it several times. He does it in Ephesians. He does it in 2 Timothy. So the question is, what does it mean to be a prisoner of Jesus Christ? And how do we get ourselves arrested? How do we get ourselves bound to him? Because back in the day when you were a prisoner, oftentimes you would be bound to your jailer, which means where he went, you went and you are connected to him in that way. And there really is kind of a cool little gospel principle there. In fact, again, this idea of binding yourselves by this. Uh, this is a yoke. Many of you are familiar with this. This is where two oxen work together to be able to carry that burden much uh, farther and much greater. The Lord says in Matthew 11, take my yoke, my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy. Uh, and so the word yoke really does mean to link, join, unite, keeping in mind that a lot of this, uh, the context there is about the united order, or to connect. So what is it called when we link, join, unite, and connect ourselves with Jesus Christ? Well, that's called covenants. And that's why, that's one of the things that really does set apart our church from other churches, is the ability to make and keep covenants. Those ordinances and those covenants, that's a key element to this. That is where the Lord has asked us to bind ourselves to him. And by doing so, he is able to bless us and he looks for those opportunities to bless us. Well, to kind of tie this thought together, uh, one of the greatest hymns that we have that is not in our hymn book, and many of you know this, there's a beautiful hymn called Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And it's such a good hymn and it was taken out of the hymn book when it was uh, published back in 1985 because nobody really knew much about it. And since then, there's been so many renditions of it. In fact, here's a cool one right here to show you. And I want you to think about the idea of binding yourself to the Lord as you listen to this. So watch this. Come thou 
Such a beautiful hymn. Now, one of the coolest parts of this hymn is the last verse, which says, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily, I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, reminding you that a fetter is a foot chain, bind my wandering heart to thee. It's like, oh, if I am starting to wander, let thy goodness take me and connect me to thee. Prone to wander, oh yeah, we are. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. This is one of the greatest ways to explain the idea of connecting ourselves, binding ourselves to Jesus. So how do we get arrested? 
Well, being bound to the Lord and being called a prisoner of Jesus Christ sounds like such a worthy goal. So may we all stop wandering and turn ourselves in by making and keeping covenants and may we never get released. That's what I really think the gist of these verses are with verse 10 and verse 15 is I learn and bound when you do what I say. When you do not what I say, you have no promise. Therefore, bind yourself to me through those covenants and allow me the opportunity to bless you. I love that principle, and I love that the Lord does that. So let's always look to connect and bind ourselves to the Lord. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and thanks for sharing. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.